a question here. How could we get a 100% bioavailability? How could we get 100% of our dose into the systemic circulation directly? Well, it's very easy. This could be done through getting the drug directly here. We can do this by introducing the drug in the veins. So it would get directly into the systemic circulation. That means that our drug is injected intravenous. And that means that intravenous route or IV route gives us 100% bioavailability. And we can say that this route, the IV route, bypasses what? Yes, it bypasses the first pass metabolism. Not only the IV route passes the first pass metabolism, any injection route passes it. Also, when giving our drug under the tongue or sublingual, this also passes the first pass metabolism. Because the veins that carry the blood from the tongue go directly into the heart without passing first by the river. But it should be noted that the only route that gives us 100% bioavailability is the IV route. Even injecting the drug in the muscles, or what we call it, the intramuscular route doesn't give us 100% bioavailability because some of the drug might be retained in the muscle or it might even be metabolized inside it so the percentage that leaves the muscle isn't 100% of the dose injected so there are many routes in which first, first pass metabolism is bypassed, like sublingual or injection routes, but only one route having 100% bioavailability, which is the intravenous route. A question here should be asked How the drug passes from the GIT? and gets into the portal vein. Well, let's have a look at a part of our small intestine here. The cavity or channel within a tube or tubular organ, such as blood vessels or the intestine, is called the lumen. And the boundaries of this cavity here is called the wall. So in this part of our small intestine here, this is the lumen, and this is the wall. And here and here is the vein that drains the blood from GIT, which we call the portal vein. Our drug is now here, dissolved in the lumen, in the GIT. T fluids. So, to reach the, this portal vein, it must pass through the walls of the small intestine. This wall of the small intestine is made up of cells called mucosal cells. So, our drug here in the lumen must pass through this mucosal cell in order to reach the blood in the portal vein. And mucosal cells, as every cell in our body, has a cell membrane, which is phospholipid in nature. And we know that like dissolves light. So, for our drug to pass through the cell membrane of the mucosal cell, it must be lipid too. It must be lipid soluble. 
it must be lipophilic. But there is a small problem here. The drug will pass successfully through the cell. It will pass successfully through the cell membrane because it is lipid soluble. But what and how would the drug be dissolved in the blood, which is water? So, a drug being oligophilic will pass successfully through the cell membrane. But now, this lipophilic drug, what would it do in the blood, which is water? This drug, being lipophilic, would be trapped inside these mucosal cells, wouldn't it? So our drug shouldn't be 100% lipophilic. It must have some hydrophilicity. It must be balanced. But to be honest, most of our drugs are more lipid soluble than being water soluble. They have some hydrophilicity, of course, but they are soluble more in lipids. So again, we would have a problem transporting these drugs in the blood. So, how can we solve that problem? Well, let's have a look on what our blood deals normally with the lipids that move through it, which comes from the food you eat. The blood transports these hydrophobic fats that hate water carried on hydrophilic molecules. What are these hydrophilic molecules? They are the proteins. So our blood transports lipids carried on proteins. And this assembly of lipid and proteins are called lipoproteins. So our drugs being more lipophilic, more lipophilic than being hydrophilic, the blood would deal the same way it did with the lipids. It carries these lipophilic drugs on proteins and plasma, which are called the plasma proteins, like albumin and globulin. Our drug molecules are carried on these plasma proteins and are released from it to our tissues to act. So, we got two forms of our drug in the blood. A bound form to the plasma protein and this form cannot exert any action. And a free form. And this is the form that can give an action. So, we can say that these plasma proteins act as a reservoir, where our drug molecules are stored on it. And we can say that both the bound form and free form are in equilibrium. That means that when the free form got reduced, the plasma protein release some of the bound form to equilibrate again. So, now our drug paracetamol, back again to it. It reaches the brain after reaching the systemic circulation and it treated our habit. And now our body no longer needs paracetamol. So now we want to get rid of it from our body. So now our drug must be transported into a fluid again. But this fluid gets out of the body. What could be this fluid? Yes, it's the urine. So our drug must reach the kidneys to reach the urine and get out of the body. So when our drug reaches 
the kidney, it undergoes excretion and gets out of the body. But here, we also have a problem again. This urine is water, and our drug, as we said, is mostly lipophilic than being hydrophilic. How would it be dissolved in urine, in water? So our drug should be first converted into hydrophilic form, so it can be easily excreted in urine. This would be done through metabolism. So metabolism that we mention here not only means breaking down the molecule, but it has a deeper purpose, which is Converting the drug from being hydrophobic to hydrophilic to be easily excreted in urine. So we better call this metabolism a biotransformation process.